Recording live and I'm back again. Here at Herring Auto Mall, 3001 North 34th Street in Tampa, Florida. It's a beautiful sunny day. Great day to show you this, 2004 Ford Crown Victoria for your viewing pleasure and purchasing consideration. This thing is obviously an ex-police car, P71, government vehicle, all that kind of stuff. But the fun parts, there's quite a few of them actually. One of them being, this was a pit maneuver training car, as you can see. Pit maneuver training car. So this would have been for Alachua, it's either Alachua or Alachua County Sheriff's Department here in Florida. And they probably either had this custom made or somebody made it, you know, in their shop. But everything is welded together, solid metal. It goes straight into the frame and is welded straight to the frame. Goes down, protects the engine underneath it. Is welded down there. Welded, welded, welded. All the way around. Then the same thing on this side. Goes down in there, gets welded. Goes down under, welded. So this car is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to take you around it. It's got a lot going on. You can see that it's far from perfect. You have some of the like plastic covering coming off of the bumper here you've got the paint that's just shot for the most part might as well be again back bumper paint on that and everything is shot on that bumper cover glass is all good this is car number 152 i think that's a cool part of his history I'm not ready to take you inside yet. You do have this gash here on the fender. Here's the kicker. You've probably got to live with that because if you look at the schematics of this, there's no way to get the fender off without cutting the bar or removing the bar. And then even if you did, you've got to put it back together. So just Picture this in your mind and think about that. You may have to live with this crunched fender because how else are you going to replace it? I don't know. Up to you. It can be your car and you can make that decision. Now I'm ready to take you inside. It's nothing fancy, but it is cool. It still has the partition in the back. You know, do what you want with that. Back seat's in great shape, as you would imagine. Now the tires... This one, this one's probably okay, but I would expect you're going to need to replace the other three. I know this one is shot to hell. That one's gone. You need to replace that tire. And I know some people, let me just stay on track. Let me stay on track. This tire is okay. And this one's shot. So you need, that one's really bad. You need, that's a slick. You need two tires at least. That one up there and this one back here. You need two tires minimum. Just going through, saying things as I see them and remember them. Interior, it's not bad. I've seen way worse police cars, ex-police cars. And the funny thing, or it's not funny, but the cool thing is that this car was never used in service, you know, patrolling the streets. This was, you know, bought for this purpose, outfitted for this purpose. And it spent its whole life... You know, doing donuts and burnouts and, you know, it's only got 94,000 miles, but let's all admit that they are hard miles. And that's okay because they're well taken care of miles and, you know, they take really good care of these things. If something goes wrong, they fix them. So that's the cool part. Actually, there's a lot of cool parts, as I keep saying. Now, when you start it up, sometimes you'll hear a little bit of like a belt squeal at first. I don't know if it's going to do it this time or not, but... We'll see. You heard it a little bit there. AC is ice cold. I need it. It's hot here today. As you can see, the check engine light is on. I'm not sure why, but I do have a little computer, a little scanner. I'll hook it up and we can figure that out together. As you can see, 94,000 miles. No other warning lights. No other issues illuminated. That red one there is because I don't have my seatbelt on. AC is ice cold, like I mentioned ice cold max now back here on this partition you have 
a gun rack. This is a gun rack. It's locked, right? You've got this little button. And what do you think that button does? That button right there unlocks your racky poo. Your gun racky poo. Your rack, gun rack. Hit this button, you're gonna hear a very faint little click, and then that's gonna trigger the solenoid to unlock that, okay? Boom. Now you pull your gun out. Boom, 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 boom. Get on the ground! Now, I don't know if you heard that, but there was another little click, and now it's locked again. So, you know, you can leave it open or you can close it back after you take your gun out, but after a certain amount of time, the solenoid goes back to where you can't open it again. So I'll flip the switch one more time. So now it's unlocked. Put your gun in or take it out, whatever. You see, you have a few seconds, maybe 10, where it stays unlocked. You heard the click, now it's locked again. Very cool. We're gonna turn that down because it's getting a bit cold in here now. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little road test. Now, this bar, it's pretty cool too that you can see both edges of the car like perfectly like when you're parking you can see that edge perfect i love it if i had the means i would be keeping this car just because it's so cool how often do you see pit maneuver training cars for sale and i haven't even gotten to the best part yet Now it runs, drives, starts, stops. I did mention that you're gonna need to replace those two tires at the minimum. And there's probably more work you're gonna wanna do to it just to, you know, freshen it up once you get it, you know. Um, if this was my car, I would freshen it up with like, you know, ball joints, grease everything up, just a little, little maintenance you know these cars they're heavy in the front and um this car is even heavier in the front with that big bar so i would just go through the front and make sure it's all nice and tight it feels okay when you're driving it you know it's not all over the road or anything like that but nonetheless i would get it checked out if you plan to drive this car on the road long term um, i did have it taken to my mechanic he did a few little things to it which i'm happy to explain um but yeah, it still is going to need your own maintenance procedures. Now, I don't know if you heard that, but the uh, exhaust has a little bit of a rattle to it. That's probably from the catalytic converter. You can replace it, or you can leave it. It makes no difference to the car, but you can kind of hear it sometimes at idle there if I shut up. You can kind of hear it a little bit as it's coming back down. Anybody, if you've been around these cars, these Panther cars a lot, or even any of these, this kind of year range of Fords, you know that sound. And you can vouch that it's the catalytic converter or at the minimum something in the exhaust, but car runs all right. Cold AC, it's a pit maneuver training car. It shifts through all the gears. I mean, what more can you ask? Now, the kicker with this car, and I kind of jumped the gun a bit doing this video because I should have just waited until I had its other piece. But I wanted this video done. I want to get this out on the lot, get some eyes on it. So I'm doing the video. This is the best part. This car has a brother. That's right, a brother. This car has a twin freaking brother. Now here's the good and bad part, however you wanna see it. This thing 
has the bars in the front. The other one has the bars that come all the way around these doors and then it goes all the way around the back. I'm gonna attach some pictures of that one because it's not here with me, it's at the mechanic. Also getting a few little things done, but this one has the bar in the front. This one's made to be the pitter, the one that hits the other car. Then the other car is made to be the one that gets hit. So this bar is up front. The other car has the bar all along the sides and around the back. They're twin freaking brothers. Had to deal with a customer. Had to pause for a second here, but so now we're back. And uh, I think where I was leaving off was about his twin brother. So I'm actually gonna like pause the video somehow, do some editing work here. And I'm gonna add the pictures in of his brother. Its brother has 97,000 miles versus this one's 94. The other one does have some body damage from where they installed this and it's been pit maneuvered and all that kind of stuff. So you should not expect any kind of perfect car, just like this one. But the pair of them, I think should stay together. I really do think that the pair of them should stay together. So what I'm gonna do, this one with the bar in the front is obviously gonna be more desirable. Everybody's gonna think that this is like the apocalypse car or all that kind of fun stuff. And this one is gonna go faster probably. I want 3,600 bucks for this car, $3,600. $3,600, depending on your situation, out of state, you know, that kind of stuff, it changes, you know, what the fees would be. I don't charge any crazy dealer fees. For example, um, this would be a $21 dealer fee. And that's just basically to cover the electronic processing costs. But uh, it's $3,600 and then plus tax tag title if that's what you need or, you know, however we work it out. But $3,600 plus tax tag title. It's brother, the one that has the bars around the back and the side. I'm going to put that one out for $3,300. $3,300. Three the pair of them individually valued at $6,900. Like, you know, if you put their prices together from individual $6,900. I want to sell the pair of them for 6000 Really, that's what I want. I want to sell the pair for $6,000. $6,000 for both cars. $6,000 for both cars. That's what I really want to happen here. And I think it's the right thing. These cars need to stay together, damn it. A, a little note. Um, I feel like if you buy this car, you need to do something about this. You probably shouldn't drive it on the road like long term with that it's almost too clear and obviously this is not a police car anymore but like a state trooper or something like that they might want to give you a hard time for that or if this is going to be like a show car an off-road car demolition car whatever honestly i had an electric pressure washer which is not that strong and i was getting most of the spray paint off so if you had like a gas pressure washer or even maybe like some paint thinner or something, you can get that spray paint off if you want it to retain its police look. But if you're gonna drive it on the street, cover that up, take it off, paint the car, do something. Just my advice, do whatever you want if you buy it, not my deal, but missing the spotlight, as you can see, those scumbags took that off. What else is there to say? I'm not sure, but if you have any questions, feel free to call or text me at 813-440-7769. You can find me in person at 3001 North 34th Street here in Tampa, Florida. And I am open all the time unless I'm not. I'm literally here. Unless I'm somewhere else. So call or text me before you come. If you need um, to get an, set an appointment, schedule a test drive, whatever you want to do. If you just have a question, you just want to chat, email me. That's an option too. HerringAutoMall at gmail.com. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Herring Auto Mall. Until next time. And actually, I'm back because I forgot to say about selling the pair of them for the 6,000. Really, what I want to see happen with these cars, because I think they deserve it. Uh, first of all, Crown Victorias, the value of them is going up, just period, because people are realizing what these cars are, what their potential is, long-term reliability. I mean, these, these cars make great daily drivers. You've got a V8, solid body on frame construction. It feels nice when it's riding down the road. You're not gonna match this ride. Sure, different cars may ride better, but they don't ride like this, damn it. And they're just stone cold reliable. They'll give you years and years and hundreds of thousands of miles of just almost carefree driving experience. This is arguably one of 
the best, not the nicest, not the flashiest, not the coolest, but it's one of the mechanically most reliable cars probably ever made, you know, at top 10 at least, top 20 maybe, if you wanna, I don't know. But damn it, man, these cars are good. So the values are going up. They are getting retired by police fleets left and right. They're to that age now. It's hard to find any more that are still in service, you know, legit. So the supply of them is dwindling. These, these clean Crown Victorias, those are becoming really scarce. Those are going for big money now. So that said, you know, adjusting for inflation and all that kind of shit, really, really clean Crown Victorias are, they're, they're going for high teens, you know, at right now, 2024, high teens. You could, you know, not bat an eye at a Crown Victoria, a really clean one now, a really clean one, going for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten grand. If, oh, and if the miles are like ridiculously low, it's plus, 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 bud. So adjusting for inflation and scarcity, etc., etc. This car right here is worth the $3,600. You don't see pit maneuver training cars for sale, let alone two of them, let alone twin brothers, damn it. They're not identical, but shit, they're twin brothers, man. You don't see that. You have the opportunity to have a piece of history, automotive history, police history, you know, among a whole slew of other reasons why to get this car. But nonetheless, back to it, circling back, they need to stay together. So my hope, and I'm going to reach out to, you know, all these big YouTubers and uh, mechanic shops. I, I don't, I'm going to say that I don't care who gets it, but I kind of do because I want these cars to go someplace where they're appreciated and, you know, I want them to still be used and driven and stuff. But, you know, between me and you, I don't really want them to be abused and... Yeah, I had one guy approach me about buying them for a demolition derby. And um, he was like, come on, work with me, man. And I had no motivation to work with him at all, bud. I'm like, hell no. Sell you these cars for cheap so you can go smash them up in a demolition derby. And, you know, you get a couple races out of them. And now they're just scrap metal and shit. That's it's a sad life. You know, and yeah, I know it would do great in a derby, but pick another car that is not going to do so good that people don't care about. Like, I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. So I want the car to go to a channel that, or a movie producer or a, you know, prop, movie prop. I don't know. I don't know. I just want it to go somewhere where it's loved, cared for. And if they can stay together, that's a plus. So, you know, maybe Mr. Random Reviews, you love Crown Victorias. I love your channel. It'd be cool if you got them, added them to your collection. Uh, you know, all these other Vice Grip Garage, Hoovies, uh, you know, all these people that buy cars and do cool shit with them. Y you have a pair of cool shit cars. Come on, you can do anything with them. And if you want to respect my wishes, up to you. If you want to, then you'll take care of it and you'll love it. And it'll be a part of your family, like a pet, but one that you can never put down because it's so damn good and it'll never stop. Anyways... You've got my contact information. I'm going to reach out to them. Hopefully one of them will get it. And damn it, my last resort, I really don't want it. But if Whistling Diesel came along, I'd sell it to him. I'd sell the pair to him. I would cry myself to sleep that night and probably delete my YouTube app and Facebook and Instagram. Maybe just get off of phone service altogether if I sold these cars to Whistling Diesel. But I would still cash his check. So if you want to be the one that drives this car home, possibly the pair home, Come on, call or text me. Hit me up. They, I don't think, are going to last long. And even if they do last long, I don't care because I'll drive them. So, yeah. I'm showing you all my cards. Boom. Here are my cards. Here are my cards. You've got no reason to negotiate with me. I've given you everything up front. You know everything about this car that I know. And it's worth it. And I don't care if it doesn't sell. How about that? 3600 bucks if you want this one, 33 if you want the other one, 6000 if you want the pair. Here at Herring Automall, 